Welcome back everyone to another episode of That Diabetes Guy. My name's Nick and this is part two of interviewing Diana Isaacs where she's going to review CGM graphs, time and range goals, and so much more regarding CGM use. So stay tuned and enjoy. Well, my name is Diana Isaacs. I'm a clinical pharmacist, and I'm also the CGM and Remote Monitoring Program Coordinator at the Cleveland Clinic Diabetes Center. I know you're not going to like this question, but would you rather have an A1C or a CGM report? Well, it's a good question because A1C is just an average. So, you know, it's really, really limited because someone could be high half the time and low half the time and have an A1C at target. Um, but we know that's not good, you know, being high and low and bouncing around all the time versus when you have a CGM report, you have something called time in range. And time in range is so much better because you actually, you know, you know if the person is on that roller coaster or not. And the idea with time and range is that you're really aiming for between 70 and 180. So you're trying to limit the amount of time of low blood sugar, that's when it's under 70, and you're trying as much as possible to keep it under 180, which is that target after meals to try to stay under. And we're aiming for, what this is good news, we're not aiming for 100% or even 90%, we're aiming for 70% or more. And in fact, people at high risk um, of low blood sugars or just have more challenges, we're even aiming for 50%. And to me, when I have that information in a report, that is so super useful and um, more useful than just that A1C number. Well, how about give us a, an example or maybe a successful situation with somebody that you really kind of impacted you and maybe an unsuccessful situation where they wore a CGM that wasn't maybe the, you know, the let's just say it wasn't the best uh, outcome that you were hoping for. Sure. So, I mean, I get to start CGM on so many people. It's really exciting. Uh, you know, just a couple days ago, I put one on someone who was 26 with type 1 diabetes for eight years, and it was his very, very first time wearing CGM. So I am getting to start it on people, and it's incredible to open their eyes to all of this information. The story I'm going to choose to share is actually a woman with type 1 diabetes who was 75 years old and came in with her daughter. And she had diabetes for, I think, like 40 or 50 years. She had diabetes for a very, very long time and also had never worn CGM before. So I got her started on actually the Dexcom G6, and we set it up with her smartphone. And her daughter was able to use the Share app with it. And so her daughter was actually able then to get alerts if she, her mom went high or her mom went low. And the sense of relief from the daughter, but also how easy it was, you know, for, you know, for the 75 year old to be able to use it and just have that, I guess, sense of relief of, you know, management and actually know what, what's happening and have a better sense of how much insulin to give. Um, so that was really a great, um, a great thing to see. In terms of your other question about when does it not work as well? Um, you know, I think the thing is, this is not set it and forget it. Yes, I think it's pretty, I think it's straightforward. I, you know, I don't think it's so overly complicated, but there's still education that's required to understand it. So I have had people wear CGM and their numbers just hang around 350 all week or 300 all week. And they don't know that that's not at target. So we talked earlier about how the target is 70 to 180. So they're wearing it and it might be alerting them and they're seeing all this information, but because they don't understand what it means, they're not able to take action on it. And so it's just so important that we teach that as well so people can act on the information. Okay. All right. So I mentioned time and range earlier and I want to expand on that a little bit more. So what is this time and range, right? Well, the idea is that we're trying to have as much green as possible. And green is 70 to 180, because remember, under 70 means low blood sugar, and 180 is that target we're trying to stay under even after meals. So 70% in this range, and we're golden. Now, what about low blood sugars, right? So the thing that we're learning with CGM is that 
Unfortunately, low blood sugars happen. With our current insulin therapies that we have and everything, it's really hard to completely eliminate low blood sugars, but we're trying to reduce them as much as possible. So we're trying to actually keep this area under 70 to be under 4% of the time. And to put that in perspective, that's about an hour per day. What we really want to avoid are the very low blood sugars, which is considered a blood sugar below 54. And we're trying to keep that to be below 1% of the time. So we don't want, that's why you see it's the darker red. We don't want too much of that. Now let's talk about higher blood sugars. So going up above 180, we're trying to limit that also to less than 25% of the time. Now, the very high, we consider that to be over 250, and we're trying to limit that to be less than 5% of the time. The good news about all of this is no one's saying, you've gotta be perfect. You've gotta be in this range all of the time because we acknowledge that, you know, there's so many things that affect blood sugars. And sometimes when you think you've done everything, like exactly perfectly, for no explained reason, you know, things go higher or things go lower. But the whole idea really is that we're aiming for green. We're going for green. The more green, generally, the better you feel and improved um, blood sugar management. Now, what would you suggest if someone was starting off wearing a CGM and the first report, they're averaging maybe only 25% time and range in that green zone. Do you think it's um, that they should always be shooting for 70% or is it more of an incremental approach? How would you tackle that situation as far as getting to that goal of 70% or more? That is a great question. So yeah, when we talk about 70%, people don't come in at 70%. I mean, people come in at all kinds of things. Some of, I've had patients that are at 0%. Um, I have patients at 5%, at 10%. So of course, we meet people where, where they're at. And the truth is, even every 10% incremental increase is a huge benefit for health. And so yeah, if you're starting off in less time in the green, our goal is to really try to, you know, slowly increase that. And this would be a good time to actually show you my other graph for kind of how we're going to um, increase that time and range. All right, so I wanna put this all in perspective, right? So what does a CGM report look like? Well, we usually have something that's called an ambulatory glucose profile or AGP. And this is showing basically someone's trend line over a 24 hour period and it goes 12 a.m to 12 a.m the next day and the under 70 is that red the over 180 is the yellow and the very high is that orange and the green is the range that we're aiming for so what we can see this person if we're looking at it you know they kind of start off the day in range but then they dip a little bit low and then the low this is a really common thing we see by the way lows don't feel good and so we talk about like the rule of 15 grams to treat a low sugar but in real life a lot of people do way more than that because it doesn't feel good to have a low and that low can lead to a rebound high and then the high you're trying to fix the high and sometimes that leads to another rebound low uh, in this example here that came down to that target range and then kind of went up again and so we see a little bit of a roller coaster and just so you know, it is totally normal for blood sugars to rise with eating and with food and with carbohydrates. The key is we just don't want it to rise too much. We wanna to try to keep it under that 180. So if you're not there, you know, if you're there 5% of the time, 10, 20, wherever you're at, that is okay. You can work with your diabetes care and education specialist and your diabetes team to try to narrow this and get more of the time in the green. And some ways to be able to do that are really A, wearing the CGM and learning kind of what factors cause these things and reflecting on it too and saying, hey, what do I think led to this low? Did I you know, give myself some extra insulin? Did I eat less than usual? Did I, was I more active that day? But trying to really reflect, even writing down these things or keeping it in an app can be super, super helpful. Other things, you know, sometimes you need some medication adjustments and that's where talking to the healthcare team to see how we can balance things out, shift things around to get a little bit more stability. Other things that help, definitely exercise, physical activity, uh, like walking after meals can sometimes help the spikes that occur with that. 
Um, but definitely don't be discouraged wherever you're at. A lot of times when people wear CGM for the first time, you know, they never knew where their blood sugars were running, especially, you know, when you compare it to finger stick information, even for the person that's checking finger sticks four times a day, you know, you don't really know what's happening in between each of those times. And so you're gonna learn a whole lot more and then you can work with your healthcare team to really fine tune everything to increase that time in range. That's the end of the episode. Thank you again so much, Diana, for being the expert you are. You are truly the CGM guru. If you guys liked what you saw, well, consider giving us a thumbs up. Tell us about it in the comments below. And if you haven't already, well, consider subscribing. And until next time, take care.